It's a tremendous honor to be able to share a little bit uh, of our work today uh, with you, Your Holiness. So I'm going to share a bit about a program that we've been developing here at the center that we call Healthy Minds at Work. And the, the motivation for this is really twofold. One is so that we can begin to share some of what we're learning, some of the wisdom from the world's contemplative traditions, like Buddhist meditation practice and other traditions that we can share these practices with people in the modern world in a way that will help them actually apply these insights and practices in their own daily lives. And the other motivation is so that we can use this work as a basis for our research. So you've probably heard more, uh, heard these days that mindfulness and meditation practice are becoming much more popular, much more common. Even 10 years ago, they were very much not so well known and they were considered something that was, you know, Buddhist or other religions, but not necessarily for people who were not religious or of different religious traditions. Uh, but now they're quite popular. They're very common and increasingly in workplace settings, uh, in universities like we have here, uh, in schools and hospitals, many different places are beginning to uh, practice this. And one of the things that's made this possible is programs. So there, in particular, is a program that's called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, which is now a very commonly taught program. And having this systematic program has allowed scientists to study it. So here at the center, many of the researchers uh, of course, under the guidance um, of Richie, have been trying to understand not only mindfulness, but other forms of meditation practice. So the program we've developed and are still developing is uh, designed to look beyond not only at what we would think of in Buddhist tradition as, as shine or shamatha practices, but also practices that have to do with connections between people, com loving kindness, compassion, uh, bodhicitta, practices that have to do with insight, so analytical meditation, other forms of insight, and then practices that are meant to give people a deep sense of purpose and meaning in life. So for example, in the Buddhist tradition, Lodok Nampashi is an example of uh, contemplations that help change our perspective on what it means to live a full, meaningful life. So the program is really uh, includes many different practices and will allow us to study these practices from a scientific perspective. So another element to this program is the question of how can we effectively measure these practices so we can see the benefits they have and how they actually work. So what we've been doing is we've been taking the measurement tools that we use in the laboratory, places like we do here at the center, and we can put them on a smartphone so that people around the world can actually be using these measures at home or at work and they can see their own progress and what changes over time on their own. So part of the program is this aspect of how both for us and for them to actually begin to measure what happens when people do these practices. And then another important element of this, and this was actually in the title uh, of the talk, which was uh, an important element is not only looking at meditation, but also how things like our view or our perspective and how we learn actually can have an impact on our well-being. And then when we apply these teachings in our life, what impact that has. So again, from a Buddhist perspective, So in the, what I just said to His Holiness is view meditation and conduct, which is kind of a Buddhist framework and how we actually can measure how the, the view versus the meditation and how we apply that in our daily life and the combination of these things so we can begin to understand this scientifically. So part of the program has aspects that are more about the view, so teaching people important ideas and principles that hopefully will help change their perspective and lead to greater insight and understanding. And then of course there's meditation, so the program also includes meditation elements, so here um, is just a, a screenshot that would show if somebody has their phone, has this program, they could select from different practices and they would be guided through different forms of practice. So here, <laughs> simple mindfulness of breath. So say you, you picked uh, mindfulness of breathing practice, they could choose between different speakers, they could choose how long they want to do the practice. And then another point that we're very interested in studying scientifically is 
what happens when people do a practice that's a sitting meditation practice versus when they might do something that's active. So if they're going for a walk or they're doing work at home and they can actually be doing a practice at that time. So in this case, they might choose to do a sitting meditation practice for 15 minutes and they're guided through that on their phone. And then, as I mentioned, people could also could choose these to do these practices in the midst of daily life. So you might choose it when you're at work and you have a, a few moments. You could even do the practices with other people uh, or when you're just out in the world going for a walk. And importantly, we can begin to measure these things. What happens uh, when people do active practices versus sitting meditation? And what is the greatest benefit to different kinds of people? So this is just a very, very high high-level summary of, of the program we've, uh, we've been developing, but the hope is that it can be a basis for some of the research. It can help us better understand how these practices work, how they benefit people, and then we can uh, hopefully make a difference in people's lives. So that's just a few words about this program. I think next up is uh, Melissa. Thank you, Court.